If your car was stuck in the mud, what would you do to get it out? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about a technique that can be used where you can amplify the force that you can apply, which will help you to pull out a car out of the mud. So in this problem, we have a student, a clever student, that ties a 20 meter long rope to a tree to pull his car out of the mud. Now he applies a 500 Newton force at the midpoint of the rope as shown below. What will be the tension force acting on the car at the instant when the student has moved the rope one meter from its point of origin? So as he applies this force, the rope is going to bend. So it's going to look something like this. Here's the car, and here is the tree. So this is his applied force. Now, once he pushes the rope in that direction, he's going to create a tension force acting along the ropes. So there's going to be a tension force in this part of the rope and another one acting on the car, pulling the car out of the mud. Let's call this T1 and we'll call this T2. Our goal in this problem is to calculate T2. Now T1 is going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component. T1x and T1y. Now T2 is also going to have similar components, T2x and T2y. Now because the student is applying the force at the midpoint of the rope, T1x and T2x, they will be equal to each other. Now, T1y and T2y, because of the symmetry of this problem, they too will be equal to each other. Now, the vertical tension force in the y direction, they're created by the applied force that the student applies. So that applied force is equal to the sum of the two tension forces in the y direction. And because they equal each other, we can replace T1y with T2y. And so we could say that the applied force is twice the amount of T2y. Now using trigonometry or SOHCAHTOA, we can see that sine theta is equal to T2y divided by T2. sine is opposite over hypotenuse and so we get this multiplying both sides by t2 we can see that t2y is t2 times sine so the applied force is going to be 2 times t2 times sine of theta Now, how can we calculate sine theta? So I'm going to redraw this triangle. Let's call this D, the distance at which the student is applying the force from the point of origin. Because as he applies the force, the rope is going to bend and he needs to continue moving in this direction to pull the car out of the mud. So the tension force acting on a rope is going to be dependent on how far he has moved from that point of origin. Now this part, the length of the rope, that's not going to change. So L is going to be half of the length of the rope. It's going to be the distance between the car and the point at which the student applies the force. 
So the length of the rope in this problem is defined to be 2L. Now sine theta using this triangle is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be D over L. So the applied force is 2 times T2 and then D divided by L. Now I need to solve for T2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by L and I'm going to divide both sides by 2D. So 2D will cancel here and L will cancel as well. So the tension force T2 is going to be equal to half of the length of the rope which is, we define it to be L, times the applied force divided by 2D. So now let's plug in the numbers to this equation. The applied force is 500 newtons. L, the length of the rope, or half the length of the rope, the length of the rope is 20 meters, so that's 2L. Half of that would be L, or 10 meters, divided by 2D. And D is the distance from which the student has moved the rope from its point of origin, so D is 1. 500 times 10 divided by 2 gives us a force of 2,500 newtons. So notice that the student, by this design, by this setup, was able to magnify his force by a factor of five. Instead of applying 500 newtons of force directly to pull the car out of the mud, through this setup, he increased that force to 2,500 with the help of the tree. And let's understand how this works. So the student applies a force in the vertical direction, in the y direction. And so he creates the tension force T1y and T2y. The tree provides the horizontal tension force T1x and T2x. And T2x is significantly greater than T2y. So the tree is doing most of the work in pulling the car. But the left of the rope, the relative ratio between L and D, that is what determines the magnification of the force between the force, the horizontal force that the tree applies and the vertical force that the student applies. That magnification is based on the ratio of L and D, as we could see in this formula. So through this setup, using the left of the rope and the tree, the student was able to magnify the force that he's using to pull the car out of the mud. So in order to increase this effect, one of the best things you can do is increase the length of the rope. The longer the rope, the greater the magnification that the force will be. So let's imagine if the student used a 200 meter rope. So this will be 100 meters and this will be 100 meters. Now when a student applies the applied force. Initially, D is going to be zero, but it's going to progressively increase as he pulls the car out of the mud. Now, because D is in the bottom of the fraction, as D increases, T2, the tension force used to pull the car out of the mud,
that's going to decrease progressively. So let's calculate D at these different values. So I'm going to calculate it at one meter. Let's make this two. So L is now 100 meters. The applied force is 500. We'll keep that the same. And D is one meter right now. So 500 times 100 divided by one, the applied force will be 50,000 newtons. Actually, I was supposed to divide it by two. I take that back. It'll be 25,000 newtons at this point. If he doubles the distance, the force will be divided by two. So it's going to be 12,500 newtons. If we cut the distance in half, the force will be increased by a factor of two. So it's going to be 50,000 newtons. So notice when he pushes the rope only by a half a meter, the force will increase by a factor of 100. But as the rope begins to bend more and more, as D increases, that tension force will progressively decrease. So by the time he moves the rope by one meter, it's going to go down to 25,000 newtons. And by the time he moves up to the two meter mark, the tension force pulling the car is going to be 12,500 newtons. So the tension force is very high at the start, but it gets weaker and weaker as he pulls the car out of the mud. So once he gets that car moving, he doesn't want to stop because it's very difficult to overcome static friction, but it's easier to overcome kinetic friction because kinetic friction usually is less than static friction. So initially it's kind of hard to get the car to start moving, but once you get it moving, kinetic friction takes over and it's easier to keep the car moving. But fortunately, at very low distances, the tension force is going to be very high. So it's going to be very helpful to get that car moving out of the mud initially. So let's say when he begins to move it only by, let's say, 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters, the force is going to be five times greater than this value. So it's going to be 250,000 newtons. But as he moves it out of the mud, it's going to get weaker and weaker. So the best thing he can do to increase this tension force is to use a very long rope. As L increases, as you increase the length of the rope, the tension force that's going to be used to pull the car out of the mud, that's going to increase proportionally. So that's how you can pull a car out of the mud. It's by getting a very, very long rope, attaching it to a tree, and instead of pulling the car this way, you apply a force perpendicular to the rope and let the tree do the work of pulling the car for you using leverage. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be helpful. And you know, if you ever get your car stuck in the mud, and if you happen to have a long rope with you, by some chance, this problem could be helpful to you.